Hello and welcome to this interview leading up to the 2019 North American Biodynamic Conference. I'm here with Megan Durney, who is one of our keynote speakers. Hi, Megan. Hello. How are you today? Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Megan is going to be one of our keynote speakers on Sunday um, in a panel with Gunter Hag, who we already talked too, as well as a couple other um, keynote speakers who we might have interviews with later. Um, so Megan, could you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself and your work in the world? Sure. Um, so in my early 20s, I had a, a farming call and I hadn't necessarily been on an agricultural path, but the farming call became louder and louder and I decided to listen. And I was involved in something called Woofing, Willing Workers on Organic Farms, and for about a year. And I think during that time, I really realized um, that human wounds and the, the wounds of the earth are, um, that we need each other in order to to heal the wounds that we both have. And I had, didn't know anything about farming. So on top of just basic skills, it was a real, I think, start of my spiritual path with agriculture. And right after, right after that, in 2005, I believe, Hurricane Katrina devastated the, the coast in the southeast. And I decided to to go there and work, work with, with home remediation and land remediation. And I also, again, the theme of wounds came up as I saw the kind of track of the hurricane and really realized um, that I really wanted to be a part of something long-term that addressed this issues, uh, these issues of, of wounds and, and healing. I, and I wanted to go back to farming after, after working down south for a little over a year. And I knew about biodynamics through Waldorf education. And I knew that this clairvoyant man named Rudolf Steiner inspired the, the Waldorf education movement where, you, where the human being is seen as a physical soul and spiritual being perceived as such and that the education is um, inspired around that truth and so I thought and I knew biodynamics was also connected to Rudolf Steiner and anthroposophy and I thought well hey if 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 the earth is perceived as a being a, a mineral being as well as a soul and spiritual being and the practices of biodynamics are infused with this truth I'm definitely in and so that was kind of my path into really deeply into to biodynamics. And I've been at the, the Pfeiffer Center for a little over 12 years. I believe I came right after Hurricane Katrina. And it's been amazing to be a part of this, this organization that is an education has an educational mission, but its foundation is really trying to foster, encourage, and learn from this developing farm individuality. That that's the foundation of all the educational work, which is internships, working with children and adults in public courses. And I have learned so much and I'm, I'm now uh, on the farm team the staff and it, what's really exciting this year is we've started a new collaboration with a nearby community the the fellowship community which is is focused on the care of the elderly an intergenerational community and also has has a biodynamic farm so the pfeiffer center and the fellowship are collaborating on the care of the land and working with the educational mission in the context of a community. And that's been a real exciting step that we've all taken together. So, yeah. <laughs> that's great, thank you. Yeah, and I think you already touched on a lot of 
what we're going to be um, focusing on at the conference with the theme of cultivating relationships, earth and cosmos and community. And um, yeah, do you want to talk a little bit more about what resonates for you in that theme? Yeah, I think how much I'm learning each year as a farmer has been immense. And I think through the, the practice and art of, of biodynamics, the reality that the relationships between the plants, the animal, the earth, and the human is really where the, the farm individuality lives and is alive. And to cultivate, to cultivate these relationships really takes space and, and effort. <laughs> and I'm just waking up to the realities of how do we approach these relationships and what I've learned quite a bit in the last five years or so is this, this essential element of gratitude and to kind of open the doors for a conversation to happen and also to be guided by those, those beings, those beings who we cannot see for our farm practices, the reality of the farm to be guided by that. And as a human being working with the earth, I don't feel like I can I can move forward without developing those relationships because by myself, I actually don't really know what to do. <laughs> so these, these really sacred relationships um, are not only essential for the development of, of the earth and also for, for humans and myself, but it's, it's really what is guiding, I think truly guiding the farmer the stewards and I'm really grateful for the theme of this conference and I think something I'm, I'm excited about exploring too is the the practices that we can do to cultivate relationship on the farm while working and providing needs but how do we how do we really create the space um, to listen to the animal to listen to the plant to listen to those beings who don't speak the same language we do and who may not be seen every day. So. Yeah, that was something that was coming up for me and what you were saying. Um, could you give an example of a practice that you personally have that helps to develop one of those relationships? Yeah, I could. Sorry, here's a cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I have to give a lot of, of honoring to Harold Hoven, who inspired this in a way ritual or um, approach in, a, in an everyday way on the farm. But what, what, what I learned from him and what we do here at the Pfeiffer Center is before we harvest from a bed at all, we, we open the bed, which is basically holding space to perceive the plant, say we're going to harvest for the first time from this bed ahead of lettuce. So we all kind of come around the, the bed of lettuce, just look at the bed with, with not such a hard gaze, but just a soft gaze. And then we may, we may move in a little bit closer. We just explore a little bit individually for a couple minutes in silence, and then just open up the space for what, people, what people's experiences are, what people perceived. Perhaps just we talk about the color, perhaps we talk about um, something that maybe resonates in one's soul when looking when looking at this beautiful bed of lettuce, but we we take this time before taking, and and it feels right. It feels right. It feels like an honoring. We often take 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 from the earth without giving attention to what we're doing, and without honoring the being of that plant and if we don't do that practice if we miss it for some reason and we harvest and take before creating that space and honoring it feels wrong so i'm really grateful for for harold for instilling this new practice in me and the whole the whole team is really also grateful for it and it's it's just we 
we really need to create and cultivate these kinds of experiences every day on a busy farm full of necessity. We get the, you know, really create the freedom to, to create relationship. And I do think it's creating relationship with perhaps the being of that plant, perhaps the elemental beings who help, who help in the metamorphosis of that plant. Um, it's just giving attention, and I'm so amazed at the, the, the beauty one perceives when taking the time. So that's one practice. Thank you. Yeah, that's beautiful. I, I haven't experienced that before, so that's great to know. And I'm also imagining all the people that you've worked with, all the people that Harold has worked with who've gotten exposure to this and kind of the radiating out of this practice and ho hopefully some of the people who watch this interview will also be inspired to try it. So that's, mm. you know, th th those relationships and how they kind of spread out across the space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, great, well, is there anything else that you'd like to share with folks? I feel like we got a really good taste of some of what you're bringing. I know besides the keynote, you're also doing a workshop. Um, do you wanna talk about that workshop at all? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm just, I'm, I'm really just excited to go to the conference to, to learn myself and to be with people who are holding in the middle of their attention and, and bringing to light the earth as, as a being. And I think that's quite a service for, for the earth, because we're, we're all hold, holding it in the middle and coming from our different perspectives. And I think the the conferences, the biodynamic conferences really serve a larger, um, it has a larger unseen ripple effect into the, the world of, of the spirit. So I'm really grateful to be in that, that space together. And I think the work, both with a compost, composting um, workshop and the, and the keynote with Mac and Gunter and Alex is this, this reality also of intergenerational work, which I really am grateful for. And there's those who have come before me, uh, I, I really honor and to work together. We all have a different perspective and a different way of, of fostering, encouraging and holding the developing farm. And without each other, it's, it's hard to see how, how the farmer really the earth has a future so i'm really grateful to kind of get in there with folks of different ages and different backgrounds and different spiritual paths uh, for the sake of the being of the earth um, and i think another thing i'm really excited about is really to uh, really work together on bringing the, the realities of the spirit and the realities of the, the material world together because we often live in such a dual a dual life and when we come together around these events something there's a possibility for the two who are rightfully together actually to come together in community and that's that's a real special experience and then even though it's a conference and there's a lot of People are bringing a lot of, of content. My hope is that we can get beyond the intellect and share out of experience and from our hearts. And that's where we can really come together and learn. So I think that's my hope for all of the workshops that I'm involved in, in the keynote, but also in the other, in the other workshops and keynotes that I would be witness to and participate in. So I'm excited overall. So. Great. Yeah, thank you. And I think that is that's something that it, it's an amazing thing that we co-create in these conferences. Um, and it's, it's not just about the content you learn, but also the relationships you have in that conference. And I think we're really bringing that to the forefront. Last year, we were talking about transforming the heart of agriculture. And so bringing that heart, as you mentioned, forward into this idea of relationships. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to see what, what we can co-create together. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Megan. Um, and yeah. if anyone wants to learn more about the conference, biodynamics.com slash conference has all the information you need. And we hope to see you in New York. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>